Now to explain the second part here, let's go out of edit mode. Say always switch, hit control N. Let's go back to our palette. We're just gonna grab a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. So now we have a poly frame here. I'm gonna switch over to sketch shader two. We're gonna go down here to dynamic and uh, we'll go ahead and leave subdivision two on. Let's go ahead and give us two smooth subdivisions here. So when we go through here, let's say our move brush and pull this out, we're getting a nice smooth preview. When in reality, if I turn this down to zero, you're just moving around this little geometry. But if you add smooth subdivisions, all of a sudden that result uh, is dynamically smooth. However, when I go up here to smooth subdiv of two and I add thickness, you're going to see I have a post subdiv smoothness. I'm going to make this a very thick plane here. So by default, uh, we have post subdiv. What that means is, number one, it's going to dynamically smooth my object and then it's going to add this thickness geo. So if I was to apply this right now, I couldn't reconstruct back to subdivision history because what it did was give me a smooth plane and then added this geo. I don't know if this is going to be really worthwhile or not, but what you can do is if you wanted to do a post subdiv geo and reconstruct, what we can do is we can add thickness, we have two smooth subdivisions, or we could even go as high as, you know, three subdivisions if we want to. And there's a segments option over here. So what you can do is if you have three smooth subdivisions, well if you have one smooth subdivision, if you go through here and you add two segments, and then you hit apply, you can reconstruct back, and now you have subdivision history even using that post subdiv option. If you have two smooth subdivision levels, you can add four segments, and then when you apply it, you can still reconstruct back to your original. If you have three, you can go up here to eight segments, and then when you apply, again, you can reconstruct back. However, if you go any higher than that, like say subdivision level four, you'd probably need 16 segments in here, but it doesn't go that high. So an alternative to that is you can go through here, you can hit apply, and then go in here with your Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, you can say insert multiple edge loops. You can actually type in specified res resolution. I'm gonna type in 15, and then I'm just gonna click on here. It's gonna give me 15, well 16 actually, so I can re go through, and now I can reconstruct all the way back down. So here's subdivision level one, all the way back up. Again, I don't know how useful that is, because the alternative, if you want to have those subdivision levels available to you, is let's go to smooth subdiv of three. We'll take segments down to, back down to one. If we turn off post subdiv, that's going to add your thickness along with the subdivisions. So if I have three smooth subdivisions and I turn off post subdiv, and I have segments at one still, and I go ahead and hit apply, that's already going to have these built in. So we have here subdiv one, here's subdiv two. If you turn the polyframe on and off, you'll see the new updated geo. Here's subdiv three, and here's subdiv four. So I'm to go ahead and build it in for you. What I would probably end up using post subdiv with segments is if, let's go ahead and undo it back, is if I wanted to do like a smooth subdiv of two, or one to get very specific geo. And then I would go in here and add segments just to make sure that these segments I'm putting along this border are going to be about the same resolution as the surface. So you can kind of use these segments to dial in resolution. So when you hit apply, oops, we'll turn on post subdiv here. So now as I added more segments here, we're at smooth subdiv of one, we've added four segments. So when I hit apply up here, you're going to see, we, yeah, we don't have subdivision history necessarily, although in this case we can probably subdivide back, uh, but what we do have is nice evenly distributed geometry. So you can see by adding segments, we basically made this a very nice sculptable surface and it's very predictable. We have the same resolution on the sides as we do on the top. Now in this particular case, not to make things confusing, um, you can reconstruct back down to this original plane, just luck of the draw, but that's um, just something to keep in mind when you're using segments is you can use that to kind of even topology out. Now one thing to note is that when we pulled out that plane it automatically had creased edges. So if you go over in here you see these little dotted lines running along the sides here. Um, if we go over here to uncrease all that'll get rid of those dotted lines and now this is going to behave a little bit differently. When you go in here to dynamic and we you know crank up some thickness over here. If we have post subdiv on you're going to get very sharp edges here and even your corner edges are going to be very sharp. So we go up here to like smooth subdiv of two, corner edges are super sharp. 
So if you want sharp edges, use post sub div or sharp corners, I should say, uh, using post sub div with smooth sub divs uh, is a pretty good result. If we turn post sub div off without creasing though, you're gonna see we're getting a smooth transition result because we're not creasing to hold those edges. Now you can go over here and you can click crease and that'll crease your open border edges, but now we're getting a rounded uh, corner result. Even when we go over here to post sub div, it's still a rounded corner result. So again, for sharp corners, turning post sub div off and uncreasing everything, or I'm sorry, per turning post subdivision on and uncrease everything, everything will give you nice sharp corners, even with subdivisions. So as soon as you uh, crease those open edges, you'll get rounded corners. And then of course, that's with post subdiv on and off. And with post subdiv off and everything uncreased, now you're gonna get a smooth transition on that thickness. So that's like giving, that's like essentially what you're telling it to do is, here's my geometry. I don't have any creasing. And as I add smooth subdivisions, you're giving me thickness and then you're subdividing. So when I hit apply, the cool thing about this is we have built-in resolution history. So you can go back down through your resolution history and it's about what you would expect. So all of that combined together, you can get pretty much whatever you want, just kind of dialing and uh, whatever settings to get the result that you need. Now, speaking of creasing, if we undo, undo back to where we just have the plane here, uh, just like poly groups, uh, if we turn on dynamic, let's go ahead and turn on post subdiv, smooth subdiv down to zero, and we'll turn on, uh, turn up some thickness here. If we hold down alt and start painting, and then let go of alt and just keep tapping alt, we'll get new poly groups that will transfer over to your dynamic thickness polygons as well. Of course, as soon as we hit apply, uh, if we hold down control shift and isolate this poly group, this other one on the other side is going to be a different polygroup. It may look similar, but it's actually going to be a completely separate polygroup here. Let's go ahead and undo, undo back to where we had our dynamic again. Another thing too, if you want to like, you know, hold down control shift and isolate this polygroup and then do crease, that's going to crease those open border edges on that polygroup. That's also going to transfer on your dynamic. Any creasing in any polygroup is going to give you parallel polygroups and creasing on your dynamic topology. So if I hit apply now, it's creased and it has a polygroup.